The program is going to be Tuckahoe at the turn of the century. A lot of old uh, <coughs> clips from uh, various sources. We're very pleased, too, to have Arlene Gruber uh, talk about the uh, different uh, slides uh, that are going to be shown. So as soon as we get started with that, are we on? We're ready to go, yes. All right. Arlene, it's all yours. Okay. This is the, the village of Tuckahoe. This map is dated at 1893, and it, it's on Columbus Avenue, formerly called Breckenridge. And it started the Main Street north to Maynard on Columbus Avenue. The village of Tuckahoe illustrative aerial, aerial map dated 1923. The map includes Tuckahoe, Crestwood, and Waverly Square. This is an aerial view of Tuckahoe west of uh, Grand Central Railroad from the Parkway Casino north to the Parkway Oval. This photo is around 1920. You could see uh, in, on this photo, I think a little bit of Burr's welcome in the, the building in the back there. We have a pointer, do you want a pointer? No, no? Okay. I'm okay. okay. Right. Now this is the town of East Chester map showing Tuckahoe and Bronxville. And this is uh, photo is around 1900. I just want to tell everyone, I have a book uh, at home. It's called uh, Polk's uh, Directory. And it's a directory of Tuckahoe, East Chester, and Bronxville uh, with all uh, people's names that lived in certain houses. No telephone numbers, but it shows their occupation and what they did, and uh, in one section is um, like the people from Tuckahoe, you would have uh, alphabetical. And then right after that is a list of all, every street and every house, even if the house was vacant, it had who lived in every house there. It's really a, a treasure. There's only two books in existence, and I have one. Uh, the, how I got it was, uh, Bronxville has one, I understand, but the one I have, um, when the fee building, that 101 Main Street, the uh, Washington Hotel, when my friend, uh, the Haas, owned, the Mays owned that building, when uh, everyone had gone on their way, uh, Ellen and her father sold the house, and I was down in the basement, and uh, I knew that house inside and out. And uh, we used to play all the time up in the attic, down in the basement. It was like a bomb shelter. It, had, it was all concrete and everything. And um, the, uh, the book was there. And I said, do you want this? They said, oh, no, I don't want that. You know? So I took it, and I didn't realize it's a treasure. It really is. And if, if anyone wants, I, I usually have it down here in the village it's, uh, it's for people to look at. But, you know, it's really all the old families. And like my grandfather, uh, Daniel J. Meyer, he was, uh, uh, he had a horse and buggy first. And then he had a gasoline station, which was right, uh, right where the old village hall was. Uh, you know, and uh, it was really nice. And it says in the book, Daniel J. Meyer, gasoline. <laughs> and then uh, my uh, grandmother, Marguerite, home. That's how they did it for the, wo the woman that stayed home. My Aunt Peg was a sales lady in, in Bronxville in a store. And so they have Marguerite, Margaret Meyer, sales lady. And my mother, Catherine, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a treasure. If anyone ever wants to come and look at it, I'll have it here. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. This is... This is the intersection of Columbus Avenue, which is formerly called Breckenridge, and Main Street, looking west. The corner building with the turreted roof is the Depot Square Hotel, Frank Fritz Restaurant, and Hubble and Sons Beer to the right, right on, on the right going down. The photo is dated 1907. Uh, please note the cobblestone walks, the roads, the trolley tracks, and the side uh, sidewalk, the horse hitching posts, they're all on the side there. Does anybody remember the, um, the trolley that used to go uh, from um, 
like Nepperhan over. Yeah, we used to do that. And that was that was interesting. If you went to Yonkers and all that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you transferred. You had all, you always had transfers. It was really interesting. Okay. Uh, this is the west side of Columbus Avenue, formerly called Breckenridge Street. The uh, buildings shown are the, is, are the summer gardens, the harness shop, contractor and decorator office, and the uh, Leon Brewery and pool, pool Hall with moving pictures. The photo was dated 1907. I think that's um, the first part of Columbus Avenue. You know where uh, years ago, where uh, Caparasa, Caparasso's had the barbershop on that side. Yeah, I think so. That's where it was, yeah. Okay. The west side of Columbus Avenue between Main Street and Underhill. Uh, Conlin and Company Coal Wood, uh, they had their coal, the wood, and all, the, and later they expanded over to Lime Kiln. Yeah, later on. Um, the uh, feed office with a shed and freight yard is to the right, and the cobblestone road and the horse and carriage in the Conlin storage. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a horse and bug. There's a horse in there, <laughs> believe it or not. And this is uh, this picture is dated 1907. Okay. This is also the west side of Columbus Avenue, across from Underhill Street, looking south. This is where now. Uh, I think where the uh, post office is in Epstein's, Up, you know, at the foot of Underhill Street. The, the um, railroad cars provide supplies to Conlin and Company Freight Yard from the exit spur off the Grand Central Railroad. This is a uh, photo is 1907. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, this is the west side of Columbus Avenue, across from Circuit. This must be um, right. Yeah, it is uh, right across from Sa the Circuit. Is now? A little bit, a t a tiny bit further. Okay. The building shown is the uh, Nick Fagnani apartment building, contracting office, and pool room. Beer was brewed at this location. F Nick Fagnani and his family are shown in this photo. Uh, on top of the building, there is a um, there is a plaque, Fagnani and Sons, or something like that. Okay, in nineteen hundred, this photo is. The uh, intersection of Columbus Avenue and Main Street, looking east. The building shown at the corner of the Kramer apartment building and the shoe store. The building is to the the building to the left is the Tuckahoe Hose Company barn and horse yard. This is in 1907. It's a kind of a light picture, but it's okay. And where is that? This is a, a Columbus Avenue looking east. So it's like years later it was uh, on the corner was Bruno's, wasn't it? Bruno's a, a drugstore and they had the insurance company upstairs, okay. you know. The Russell's one, the Carvel's? Uh, that's oh, on the other oh, side, oh, okay. across the street oh, from right. there. Yeah. Where the new, where the new yeah, where the new mall is. is. Yeah, exactly, where the right. new mall is. I have to get my yeah, no, it's where the new mall is. Okay, this is uh, the east side of Columbus Avenue between Maine and Underhill, and this is where um, where the stores, where Caparasso's uh, barber shop was, and the paint store, Cowers, the Bowling Alley, oh, okay, the building there. there. Okay. Yeah, okay. East side of Columbus between Maine and Underhill. The building shown as the Tucko Hose Company Horse Barn and Grazing Yard. Note Main Street School is in the background. This is the building that we're in now. You see it way up oh, on top? Oh, that's, oh, that's good. This is a uh, photo was dated 1907 also. Okay. Okay. Uh, the east side of Columbus Avenue between Maine and Underhill, which we just saw that barn. The buildings shown are the Tucko Hose Company in Barn, the horse drawn apparatus and fire crew. I know I have a relative up there. I definitely have a relative up there. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And this is um, looking northwest on Columbus, formerly Breckenridge. 
the property beyond the apparatus is the Conlin and Company freight yard with the Grand Cent uh, Central Railroad adjacent to it. The roadway is cobblestone. This photo is 1900. Look at the horses and the, you see the railroad track? I mean railroad track, the um, tr either trolley or railroad there. Okay, this is the east side of Columbus between Main Street and Underhill Street. The buildings shown are the Tucker Hose Company and the Italian Grocery Store. Main Street School is in the background. You can hardly see that one, but this is 1907 also. Okay. East side of Columbus between Main and Underhill. Again, the buildings shown are the August Chaparry horse, Horseshoeing and General Jobbing Building and the Lyceum Stock Company building, which was built in 1886 and became the Lyceum School. This photo was dated in 1907. A street view of the intersection of Columbus and Underhill Street. Looking east, the building shown is the Lyceum Stock Company building, which later became the Lyceum School, then the Tuckahoe Bowling Center. Okay, and for the people who lived in Tuckahoe, if you went up Columbus Avenue in the building, it was, uh, years ago they had a sweatshop there. The Bruno's had it. Yeah, oh you did, that's it. Really? <laughs> She was 14. Okay, but they, I remember Young walking up there and they had the, um, always had uh, uh, the, the workers and you see the big fabric, all the fabric and they, they had and all the ladies at the sewing machines there. It was really, some yes, some of them work by hand. Yeah, right on, on, on right down, right down here, right on Underhill Street. There, that's where it was. It was uh, the, so that's that building, and it later became uh, the bowling alley, and uh, they had the somebody had to set up the pins and all. You know, it was none, nothing was automatic at that time. Pin setters, yeah, no, nothing was automatic. Okay. Okay. The, uh, this is a street view of the old stone cotton mill uh, looking north from Main Street. The mill building was built around 1812 and was later purchased by the Hodgman Rubber Company in 1852. Now this is the old mill that's the restaurant now that's in Tuckahoe. They yeah, uh, the rubber raincoats Hodgman, yes, they did for the servicemen. Um, Old Mill was very generous. They, uh, they uh, recently, they just gave us a gift certificate to raffle off here. Yeah, yeah that was really nice of them. Yes. Yeah. A street view of the Old Stone Cotton Mill and associated buildings looking northwest from Main Street, Yonkers Avenue, on the bridge over the Bronx River. Uh, you know, we used to say if you were over the bridge, you were in Yonkers. You know, that's right. Yeah, where Riverview is now, you go in that. There. Yes, there's falls there and everything else. It's still there. And to the right is uh, now the Riverview Apartments. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Street view of the old stone cotton mill and associated buildings looking northwest from Maine. Street and Yonkers Avenue on the bridge over the Bronx River. That's a great picture. This is uh, from 19, this picture is from 1900. That's a nice picture. This is a street view of the Bronx River looking north. The buildings shown on the, on the right are associated with the Old Stone Cotton Mill and the Hodgman Rubber Company. The building to the left is a restaurant. This is a photo from the 1900s also. This is a street view of the bridge over the Bronx River and the Hodg Hodgman Rubber Company again. Um, looking north from the corner of Main Street and Yonkers Avenue. The buildings shown are associated with the Old Stone Cotton Mill and the Hodgman Rubber Company. And this is also 1900. 
get rid of that. This is a street view of the Hodgman Rubber Company located at the corner of Main Street and Lake Avenue. The rubber company was the largest rubber product manufacturer on the East Coast and was in operation for 75 years. The building would have been would later become Burris Welcome, US Vitamin and Revlon and now it is the Riverview Apartments and they've all been done over and uh, they're lovely. This is also another picture of the same, uh, the Hodgman Rubber Company on the corner, and um, it's, it's the same building there, it's just a repeat there. Okay, this is a street view of the Hodgman Rubber Company delivery truck and the workers. That's how, that was a good picture. Very nice. This is a street view of the Hodgman house located on the northeast corner of Lake Avenue and Main Street. The New York Central Railroad ran to the right of the house. This is a photo from the 1900s also in the winter. That looks pretty. This is a street view of the Hodgman, Rubber, uh, Hodgman house located at the northeast corner of Lake Avenue and Main Street. And as we said, the railroad is located to the right of the house. This is a 1900. That's a nice house. Is it still there? No, no, no. It's better. Yeah, the other park on. Where Growlers is, right? Yes, where Growlers is now. This is a street view of Main Street looking west at the intersection of Main and Lake. The building located in the, in the center is a CD, CR Dusenberry building. Uh, prior to the Bentley building. You know, the corner of um, uh, where Pappy's, uh, Theodore was, it was years ago. Oh, that whole building, yeah, Bentley's is now. It's right in the corner. Cornell's was there before the fire and all that. That's the same building. And uh, t t the far right is, is the distance, uh, is the old stone mill to the right. No, uh, to the right. Yeah. The street across, uh, a street view of Main Street looking west at the intersection of Main and Lake Avenue. The building sh shown replaces C.R. Dusenberry store and preceded the Bentley building. Note the diner on the left. Was that Bill Dunn's diner? I don't know if that was the diner. There was a village diner there, but that was further down. Yeah, where Angelina's is, there was a diner there. There was, a, it was called the village diner. It was, I knew that Hellman's had it first and then the Savage people. My mother worked there in the diner. I'm just wondering, it, it, before that, it might have been. It might have been, I think, I think that was Bill's diner. But in, the, in that Bel in Bentley building upstairs, it was Dr. Palmer for years, a dentist. He was on the, on the corner part. You remember that? Dr. Palmer and... Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't know why they called it. Yeah, they call it Bentley's. But it was Theodore's. Theodore's had it for years, years. Uh, when I was uh, 16, I worked there. I used to go come in the morning, um, and I used to, uh, Burr's Welcome would be opening. So I had to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I, I would stay, t uh, you know, from 6 to 9. No, this is in the summer. From 6 to 9, I would work, you know, uh, cleaning up and waving on the tables and all. Then you'd have a lull, and then about 10.30, 11 o'clock, the, the the lunch people used to start coming in, and then there was, I finally was able to go home at two o'clock. <laughs> it was fine, but you know that's what you did in those days. Okay, the street view of the intersection of Main and Lake, looking north. The buildings shown are the ladies' dress shop and a general store. Trolley tracks can be seen on the Main Street. This was the corner. 
There, yes, the Maplewood, in later years, the Maplewood, and then going further, uh, going east was the uh, Sammy's Deli, you know, and the stores. Remember um, the Shoemaker, Sue Ulrich, and, you know, right up up to Aim La Hex. Yeah, and that was where Growlers and all that is now, and that big parking lot. Okay. This is street from uh, street view of Main Street between Lake and the railroad, looking north. The buildings shown are, are a general store, barber shop, and a hand laundry. Trolley tracks can be seen on the Main Street. This is a photo from 1907. This is street view from Main Street between Lake and the railroad, looking north. The building sh uh, store shown are the meat market and Tommy's restaurant and hotel. The trolley tracks can be seen on the main streets. This is also 1907. It's a nice building. This is a street view from Maine between Lake and the railroad looking north. The buildings shown are Tommy's restaurant, Underhill Real Estate, and in an insurance company and plumbing supplies in the re rear of the building. The Grand Central Railroad is to the right of the tree, and the Hodgman Rubber Company is in the background. If you could see that, it's way in the background. This is 1907. This is a little difficult to see, but this is a map of downtown Tucko showing the location of the Duesenberry Building and how it extended into Depot Square and the present configuration, Sagamore Road at that time was called Duesenberry Avenue. This is nice. Street view of Main Street at the intersection of Lake and Main, looking east. The large building on the right side is the Duesenberry Building, which housed the town offices with stores on the ground level. Trolley tracks can be seen on the Main Street. This is uh, at the Depot Square, and it's where the building is now, where um, Carvel is on the corner. Yeah. And um, Carvel and the Antique and the barber shop and Florist, all along that stretch. That's what, was, and they used to house the, um, the town offices there. There was even a post office there at one time. And a bakery. I remember there was a bakery years ago. Cushman's. Yeah, Cushman's Bakery was there, too. <laughs> street view from Main Street looking north at the Rubley building prior to the railroad tracks being lowered. Note the railroad gatehouse to the left. Rubley invented the tog toggle bolt. This is 1900. Toggle bolt. Yeah, he did. And he was the mayor. Wasn't it mayor? The, Alice's favorite person, yes. Mayor Rubley. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was interesting. That, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay, this is a street view of Main Street looking north between the railroad tracks to the left and Columbus Avenue to the right. The buildings shown are a general, are, are a general store and a bar with the hotel above it and Depot Square Hotel. This photo is taken from the Depot Square, and it's 1900. This is, um, years ago, they had Deitch, uh, A&P, Deitch, Shopwell, right there. Yeah. And when you cross that bridge, they had these, um, it was very interesting, the, the, the metal, yeah. you know, the, oh, and the bridge. And I was so small, when my mother was in the store, I would s s wiggle my way into one of those things. My mother left me there one day. <laughs> it was really interesting. Yeah, on the bridge. You remember the the sections they had? Yeah, they really. It was really good. But uh, I remember being on line when they had the rationing, and you know, if they had butter, you know, you, you had to stand in line or sugar. And I, I do remember that being on line there. But the, after I don't know, it was before Deitch. It might have been an A and P. And then there was a, a, where that hotel is, there was a, a luncheonette. And then uh, further on down, huh? Longabuddy's had a, a little luncheonette. And also the five and 10 was there. Yeah. 
Handel's. Mr. Handel's five and ten. Yeah, you worked all over. <laughs> okay. And Roma's was there temporarily. Yeah, temporarily. Yeah, they were there. And the dry cleaner, Kent dry cleaning. Yes. Sammy's was way down further, on the other side of the bridge. The other other side of the bridge. Okay. Yeah, before the Maplewood. This was a street view of the building of Main Street Bridge. The photo taken was from the Depot Square. The Depot Square was raised and the railroad tracks were lo lowered in the process. Buildings in the background were along Lake Avenue. And this is around 1900. Look at that. That's a good picture. This is the bridge. This is a street view of the Main Street looking east from the top of a temporary bridge over the railroad tracks. On the right side is the Duesenberry building, that building we just spoke about, located in the Depot Square. Yeah. This is a street view of the Tucko train station from Depot Square. The train station is in the process of being raised as the tracks, uh, train tracks are being lowered and the bridge, and the bridge is being built. Yeah, Starbucks now. Yeah, there it is. Look at it uh, cleaned up there. Uh, there was a diner. Look at that diner there. Street view of Main Street Railroad Bridge looking north. The building shown to the, on the right is the Rubley Building. This is now 1900, but is that a diner there? Oh, no, it's a trolley. I'm sorry, it's a trolley. But it looks like it was a diner. Yeah, it's a trolley. Yeah, right by the building, okay. Street view of Main Street looking east after completion of the railroad bridge. Located on the right is the Duesenberry Building in Depot Square. Yeah, look at the steps going down. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is street view of Main Street looking north between Railroad and Columbus. The Square Hotel is the same building, the same location as the Rubley Building. The Grand Central Railroad, located on the left. This is 1912. Yeah, we had a, yeah, we had the. Most of those hotels were rooming houses, and they closed hotels so they could sell whiskey on the weekend. Oh, for the marble, was it for the marble? Was it for the marble people? Yeah. yeah, for the workers, marble workers, marble workers, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, okay. This is a street view of Main Street looking north between the railroad and Columbus Avenue. The Square Hotel is located above the street level <coughs> uh, stores. This photo was taken in 1915. They must have had some kind of bazaar, look at that. Yeah. Look at that sign. Yeah. They even had that, look at the awnings on that. Yeah. That's interesting. The leader, the leader. Yeah, I remember the leader. Street view of Main Street, of 35 Main Street looking north at newspaper store with the owner John May with, with, uh, with, with his wife below the uh, Square Hotel. Look at the... That's Patty Yes, I think it was. Yes, yes. This photo was from 1915. But look at... No, no, no. That was a completely different. May family owned... Uh, they ended up owning the... Um, yeah, but they owned on Main Street, uh, they had a uh, restaurant, and part of the Mays owned Washington Hotel. They, um, uh, not Patty May, I think it was Patrick May, the old old one. I have the uh, all the papers when that was sold, uh, from Mr. Fee to the May family. I have all the... Yes, they, they, that's the, uh, the uh, yeah. Later on, it was uh, Dottie Fuchs and her husband. And there's Margie May, and they later had the Plaza Lounge, which became Crab Trees and all that, you know, in Crestwood. Yeah, American Bistro also, yes. This is a street view of Main Street looking north between the railroad and Columbus Avenue. This photo is taken from the Depot Square. Note the Duesenberry building is located at the right. This is, you know, uh, this is really the Depot Square there. 
newspaper photograph of the Tuckahoe Municipal Building located in the Depot Square, which housed the police and government offices prior to the Tuckahoe Village Hall. The town offices were also located in the Dusenbury Building. And this was 1900. Right, right along there it was. A street view of the Depot Square looking south at the municipal building, which was the first village hall. This was 1902. Look at that building. That's it. Yeah. Okay. This is a street view looking at uh, past the original Tuckahoe train station with tracks at the grade level. In the background is the Depot Square and Pugmire Hotel. On the right is a, is a hardware store. This is in 1860. That's a big picture. Yeah. This is a street view of the Tucko train station prior to the present station. Hardware store uh, beyond is located in the Depot Square. Yeah, look at that. Street view of the Depot Square hardware store with the Tuckahoe train station located on the right. This, the, just a little portion of the train station. Yeah, and uh, yes, and yeah, and 1900s, yes. This is a street view of Depot Square and the new train station looking west. The first Union <coughs> Free Church building is located in the center with the railroad gate shown on on main street the railroad is located at street level that building is it was a church right right before the bridge yeah the photo is um 1900 okay this is a street view of depot square looking south at the train station with a uh, street level train note the horse trow trout is that how you say trout trout in the depot square this is a, a 1900 postcard, right there. My grandfather, my grandfather, my grandfather had the you know, horse and buggies there. Probably was his era. <laughs> yeah, my grandfather, my grandfather Meyer, and then the Grubers took over with the taxis <laughs> later on in the years. Gruber taxi. Yep. Street view of du Depot Square, looking south on Main Street. Note the Tucko train station with train at grade level and the First Union Free Church. That's the church we were just talking about. The trolley tracks and horse-driven wagon are in the foreground. This is also 1900. You see part of a horse and buggy over there. It was, it was on the other side of the, was it on the other side of the track, Phil? Wasn't it? That, that free church that was, we, we didn't know it was there, and all of a sudden we saw these pictures with these churches in it. I, really? We don't know. We don't have any information. If somebody else said it, you know, we don't have any other info. Yeah. Yeah. They. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. This is a street view of the Tucko train station with the arrival of the first electric train from New York City on March 14th, 1910. Well, yeah, all these people, they were so happy. Everyone's dressed nicely and look at them. Flags, everything else. Street level of Depot Square looking south from Main Street. Note the Tucko train station with railroad bridge and stair tower. That, that's a tower there, over there. Trolley tracks can be seen on the Main Street cobblestone. Yeah. Yes, on the other side of the steps going down is that, you know, when you cross over the bridge there, it's still there. And they used to have an elevator in that because when they would bring the papers and all, they would have, uh, they would go up on the elevator. And Mr. Paternostro, Mr. Paternostro used to do that. Yeah, with a cigar. <laughs> That's cute. Street view of Depot Square looking north from, from the train station 
showing the Duesenberry building on the corner of Main Street in Columbus. And you notice the stores, I mean, you can't see it in this photo, but we do know all the stores, we have pictures of them. And the, to the right, um, uh, there was the leader, remember the leader was, the leader was, <laughs> where the what? Yeah, but there was a leader there was one time, yeah. Remember the leader? My Aunt Helen McComb worked there. Yep. Yeah. That's 1910. This is a street view of the Duesenberry Building and Depot Square taken from Main Street. And if you notice, it's still the structure is the same to this day. They have all the offices, the dentists and everything else. And the corner right now is a Carvel. And then you go down to the antique and you go down to the, um, uh, the barber and, and the florist and you know, yeah, the liquor, yeah, amazing, beautiful. Uh, yeah, street view of Duesenberry Building and Depot Square taken from the Tucko train station. Note the town offices on the second floor and the businesses on the first floor. The Sagamore Road is on the right. Sagamore Road went up at an angle there. That was the corner. Street view looking south from corner of Main Street and Columbus Avenue showing the back of the Duesenberry building. Now, in the back of that now is the parking lot, the Main Street parking lot. You know where we park our cars, across the street here. That's the back of the Duesenberry building. Oh, well, here we are. Street view looking south from Depot Square of the Duesenberry building and Tucko Village Hall. That's a nice picture. That really is a nice picture. Look how nice that is. This is a street view looking south uh, from Depot Square showing the Tucko Village Hall. This was in 1913. That was nice. And on the right was the police station. On the left was the library. That was nice. Street looking north at Depot Square and the Duesenberry Building. The Tucko train station can be seen on the left side of the picture. In the background is a square hotel. Yeah, they look like they're running. There's a race. Street view of the intersection of Maine and Columbus looking north. The building shown is the Kramer Shoe Store and the apartment building. Right there, uh, where we, we said before that uh, Bruno was on the corner, you know, the, you know, and then the Hinman's shoe store, and and then they had the photography, yeah, Freegan's the big store, the the uh, dry goods store, and they had um, uh, they had a deli, they had a meat market, and they, they had the deli was right before the school, and that was Mr. Dianto, yes, yeah, he was Dave Dianto, he was a really nice man. Pusco had the shoe store, and there was a meat market there. And then later on, Patio Hairdressers was in there. Yeah. yeah they took over Freegan's, like. Yeah. Uh, the street view of Main Street looking north between Columbus Avenue and the Main Street School. That's right before the uh, school here. That was, yeah. No, it's fine. Street view of Main Street looking uh, north between Columbus Avenue and Main Street School. You see the wall? And then it's the Main Street School. That's where the, uh, the deli was, uh, the Antos. And then to the left was Pushkar. I call it Pushkar. Puska, he was the, he was the, bar, uh, the shoemaker. And it went down towards the corner. Okay, this street view of Main Street looking north between Columbus and Main Street School. Look at that. Look at the road. This was in 1907. This is a street view of Main Street uh, looking west. It's towards the bridge. The street view, uh, another one of uh, Main Street looking west. I, is that Immaculate Conception Church up in the corner? Way up no. that, that steeple? on the top is that the Immaculate Conception Church 
the steeple right in the middle, all the way in the back. No, no, if it's looking west, it wouldn't be, it would be east. That's the left, could that be the Assumption? No, it would be, uh, if it's looking west. What year? It doesn't say. That's looking towards Yonkers. It's not towards the Macklin. It doesn't say. Asbury. Them, you think that could be it? Well, I don't know. Look at look at that. Yeah. That could be, but definitely a church of some kind. Okay. This is a street view of Main Street looking west. There's your trolley. Trolley tracks and little stores with all the awnings and all. They used to so pull them. Is, I'm just trying to get my bearings. What, where is this guy? This is uh, looking what's, west. It's on, on the Main right Street. Side there? What, what would that be that's there now? Oh, uh, well, you see the, the one with the turret? Yeah. That, that's the corner of Main Columbus. And Breckenridge. Yeah, okay. that's Columbus. Okay. So this is up where these stores were. We, yeah, it's, it's close. The one on the right is closer to the school, right next to here, where we are now, yes. Yeah. Right next to the Main Street School, that, that, that little section. I know, you have to think about it. With, the street view of the Lyric Theater, located on the south side of Main Street, well, uh, near the intersection with Columbus Avenue. Yeah. And this was when they had uh, the the tires, and you know, you gave during the, war. during the war. You could bring metal things, and you got something off. And uh, I used to, um, my parents used, my mother used to go, you know, to get away from all of us. <laughs> yeah, if she was there, I'd, I'd go in the movie and looking for my mother and. She'd be on one side all the way up, and Ian Pegg would be on the other side, you know, with everybody. But that was the thing to do, and um, Mr. Lenhart, and they were, they were, it was a nice movie, The Itch. Remember? The Itch, we called it. Oh, they gave her free dish. And you know what? Um, Gibbons always had uh, his, um, they had, on Saturdays, you could go, and they had little talent shows. I was in a talent show there. And they had a talent show, and I think you paid a quarter or something to get into the movie at the place. And if you did this talent stuff, then you didn't have to pay. <laughs> huh? Oh, whatever. 11 cents. <laughs> but anyway, it was really nice. Remember Lemon Ice worked there? Lemon Ice. Remember that? Vigilati, his name was. But they called him. Everyone in Taco had a nickname. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is the uh, street view of intersection of Maine and Columbus looking east. The building at the intersection is the Kramer Building and Show, and show Store? This is the uh, corner of um, going north to the, to, uh, to the, um, the school here. I mean, to here. Going up Main Street, yeah, on the left. Okay. This is, a, this is a street view of Main Street looking at the intersection of Main Street and Columbus Avenue. The buildings shown are between Columbus and the Main Street School. Look at that. Oh, here. You see these two posts on the right uh, the, the corner? There, they were on, uh, that was on the wall of my grandmother's property, which was Salerno t took over the second section of his restaurant. And he bought that property that was my grandmother's house. And now they're building a brand new building up yeah. on Main Street there, that whole section. But that, that wall, that's part of the wall there. This was a street view of Main Street looking east of the Washington Hotel. And that, that's, it's during a parade. Look at the old cars and all that. That's, an, that's still another one, you yeah, know, same, same one. This is a street view of Main Street looking west from the corner of Washington Street. Look at the trolley, the old car. Look at the pole, uh, it must be street light or whatever, it's tilted over. Okay, this is a street view of railroad, the railroad powerhouse, which is located on the west side of the railroad tracks. In the background, 
The building on the right is the Lyceum Stock Company building at the intersection of Columbus and Underhill. When we said the Lyceum, that what, the picture in the back is where the bowling alley, yes. you know, it's that building there. These people are is where Growlers is now. It's right there. That That's the old powerhouse that they converted. They made that. And the railroad tracks are right there. This is a street view of Lake Avenue and Bronx. Well, we it's not Avenue Street, I say. Looking west. The house behind the fire truck belongs to Lee. It was Leroy Lockwood. He was our... Um, he was our... Um, man that he rent uh, when i lived on main street he we used to pay 30 dollars a month rent for that cold water flat you know and uh the parkway oval is located on the front of the fire in the front of this fire truck this is where they had the um was it children's uh where they had the uh the, yeah the, yeah, Andrew, you know, the children's thing right over here in this part. But that was on the corner. I, has, that had, they, they, they knock it down. Yes, they raised it and they put up a new house. Yeah, they, yeah, they have a new house there. Yeah, but that, that's what that is, yeah. But that was on the corner there. This is a street view. Uh, this is on Marbledale Road looking north. The building shown is the T.D. Waddleton Furniture Factory which was the maker of fine furniture. The company stayed in business until the Great Depression. Also note the train tracks that also serviced the marble quarries. Right there. That's on going down on Marble Dare Road, like almost where the ice house was. You know, remember the ice? Conlins was. Con yeah, Conlins was on the left side. But yeah. Came, yeah, and it went all through a circuit and came out through uh, Columbus and Lime kiln, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Westies, yes. And then we're King's Electronic and all that was over the years, in all those places. Yeah. Yeah, everybody cut through there. It was good. Yeah. This is a street view also uh, on Marble Dare Road looking north. And this is that building, uh, the, the furniture factory. That's okay. Uh, we certainly enjoy giving the, uh, the presentations. We do have some on the uh, village station. You look for Tuckahoe Village and down towards the bottom you'll see history. We're also on YouTube. And this is about one of about uh, 12 or 14 uh, presentations. Last year we had um, the story about uh, Main, uh, Columbus Avenue before Urban Renewal, which is another interesting one. I think you saw it last year. Yes? Actually, it's, uh, it started with, uh, with uh, Mayor Gibbons. And actually, before that, uh, they wanted to build a Park Chester type development here in the village of Tuckahoe, and it didn't go. The, uh, the discussion of urban renewal began before World War II, and it didn't begin, uh, I guess, maybe until the s late 50s or early 60s. And there were so many different plans and so much discussion, so much aggravation. Uh, I mean, it, uh, it, it brought a lot of mayors in and a lot of mayors out because they couldn't uh, decide on, on it. One of the odd things that they wanted to do was have uh, stop um, Columbus Avenue at Underhill, have all the traffic go up Underhill, mm -hmm. and then make a, uh, a right onto, um, what is it, Cameron Place, is it? Place. Yeah, and then to Main Street, which was a stupid plan. I mean, it, it, the whole village was up in arms o o over that. Ah, oh, just a... Well, uh, a number of different presentations. I don't know who, who uh, but uh, you know, the village board had to decide on that when it was brought. I think Ms. Mayor Yavina was there at the time. You know, it was just a, a, a terrible thing. And it was such a, a hard thing getting started because most of that money came from the uh, uh, federal government. And who got the money first? The cities. Mr. Rockefeller got a lot of that money to uh, rebuild uh, New York City. It, it had to be, you know, the cities had to get it first. So we waited for years, and then when we did have an okay on it, it was double-digit inflation, and the builders wouldn't touch it. Uh, had, uh, for about uh, a month's time, 
the interest rates were about 21, 22 percent. Could you imagine? And then it went down to double digits, about 11, 12 percent. So that's uh, the woes about uh, urban renewal. But when they did do it, they did a nice job. Same with um, White Plains. They started before us, and it wasn't until years later that they finished theirs. <laughs> yes? I, either case, you know. Some, some of them, some of them mm. remained, um, like the Bentley building, we call it. Mm. That was, that was always there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, what, did others, you know, burn? Or oh, some of them just yeah. taken down. You know, they were made of wood or whatever. Presently, it's owned by t uh, Tommy Del Judas. Yeah. But other buildings on, like, Main Street here, mm -hmm. they were, uh, like, the, all the ones from the, what we call Bruno's, the, the pharmacy and all, they were all taken down when the, the mall was made, and uh, that whole section, they were all taken down. One, one of the... Oh, no, Carmel, that side. The yeah. One of the oddities, and, and it's uh, still present, uh, I think most of you know the building uh, by the railroad uh, where the Korean market is. Now, that was down the floor. They built a floor over the, uh, uh, the uh, foundation there, and then it went up to the building. So the lower um, basement, which is two basements, the lower, the lower basement used to be a shooting range for the police. Yeah, that's where the fresco is. Yeah, fresco is, right. Yeah. There's so many interesting stories here. Uh, no, uh, yeah. Well, Betty, between Betty and Arlene, we get, we really get a lot of history from them. <laughs> yeah, they wondered why they had to take that 35 Columbus down. Yeah. And then you ha well, there's a reason for that. There's a. Uh, then there was a Master Buna building. Everybody, I think, knows that. When they went to uh, demolish that, the, the bulldozer bounced off the foundation. I mean, the foundation, like that thick. Yeah. I mean, there, there was a lot of sadness to it and a, a lot of uh, good to it because uh, we remember, and uh, Willie Jones told us the story, he was the relocation director, and uh, he went to this uh, elderly lady and he said, Look, we got a nice new building. It's a senior building down on um, on Union Place. He says, "Oh no, 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 no! When my husband come, he no find me. He he he'd been dead twenty years. The poor old lady, you know. It's just a, a one of those sad things. That yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you laugh and and you say, boy, that poor lady. Yeah. Well, I ask, uh, we're only too happy to answer any of your questions. Anytime you have a problem on uh, history, uh, either I or Richard, incidentally, Richard is the uh, uh, county history, county, no, not town, yeah. I'm always elevating him to the county, see? <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. I'll Arlene, Elena, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you.